Hello and welcome to my Artsy Island Girl YouTube channel. Today I'm going to make a beach resin tray. So I started out with a tray that was recycled from um, a veggie tray we got and sanded it down to give it some tooth. First I'm going to mix my resin and I calculate it by using the resin calculator on the Moss Epoxy's um, website. So I typically like to measure my resin by weight. I find it more accurate for myself. And also because when I'm measuring resin, I am using or reusing old um, takeout cups from like McDonald's and Starbucks, that sort of thing. I have teenage girls, so they're regularly getting drinks there. And rather than just toss them away, I like to give them a second life. So make sure you're using protection for your hands and for, um, and a mask and stuff like that. I typically use either um, silicone gloves or the um, latex ones that you can just toss away. So when you mix your resin, make sure that you are really scraping down the sides and the bottom. You want to get the two parts really mixed together well. If it's not mixed together well, um, it's not going to set up properly. So when you are done measuring, you should see that it's really clear. If you see any streaks, streaks or striations in it, that means it's not measured or it's not mixed quite enough. I typically do it for about three minutes, but you may need to do it just a little bit longer just to make sure that everything is completely mixed through. So I'm putting the resin into different containers because I'm going to use a few different colors and I'm also gonna mix some mica powders in with it. And you'll notice that I have a lot of extra resin left. I'm working on a few projects today, so I've um, mixed up extra resin just to accommodate for that. The container to the far left is a silicone container that has a spout to it. And I'm gonna use that for my white because I wanna make sure that I can control the flow a little bit more than the other ones. So I like to use that particular um, container for that. And the sticks that I'm using to measure it are little silicone sticks that I got off of Amazon. They are great for reusing because you can pick off the cured resin afterwards. So next I'm going to mix in the colors. I use the Craft & Craft White. Um, it's a resin pigment and I use that to do the white for my beach waves. Now when you're mixing stuff into your resin, you want to make sure that you don't have more than 10% of it in whatever you're mixing, whether it's acrylic paint, whether it's alcohol inks, whether it's mica powders. If you have more than that ratio, it's not going to set properly. And with the white, you want to make sure that it's mixed really, really well. And you want to make sure that whatever you're mixing it with, you get it when you pull it out of the resin, um, it, the white coats it. You want, don't want to see a lot of the color showing through underneath. If you see the color underneath, then you need to put a little bit more in because it's not quite opaque enough. So you can see that I put just a couple more drops of the white in there. I am using a white as well as a black golden paint to turn uh, the resin different shades of gray. So I want one that's darker than the other and I want one that's a little bit lighter. Um, I'm, use I'm using these colors to match the color of my bathroom, which is where I'm getting the colors that I'm wanting to use from. So I'm also gonna use the black here just to mix them together. And again, make sure that you're not using more than 10% of the resin or else it's not or for, or for whatever volume of resin you have otherwise it's not going to set properly these golden paints that i'm using are really quite thick and have a really nice pigment to them so they really color the resin well so you're not going to need to use um, so much of it that it's not going to set properly i've never had a problem with them i've used them for several different projects and they've worked just beautifully and again, when you're mixing the paints in with the resin, make sure that you're scraping the sides, that you're getting all of it colored. Um, if there's any clear parts in there, you might see that with different projects. For this particular one, you probably wouldn't because the tray itself is black. So I don't think you'd notice a whole lot of difference, but with ones with light backgrounds, you probably would notice if it wasn't quite mixed properly. So I'm using Pearl X powder to add some mica 
to the paint mixture. I want it to have a little bit of sparkle in with it and um, I will list what colors that I've used below. When I am mixing them, again, no more than 10%, and I've never ever got to the point where I've needed to even use it that much that it comes close to that. The lighter color I'm mixing in with the lighter gray that I want, and then the darker of the micas I'm mixing in with the darker paint, just to keep it a little bit darker. I wanna see it a little bit on the tray, but I don't want it um, to be so different that uh, it doesn't look gray. I want it to still look gray. Again, I'm trying to match colors in my bathroom and I've used those mica powders on the countertop, so I wanna make sure that they match. So now that I've got this all mixed together, I am going to mix up some sand and some rocks as well into some resin cups. Oh. I added a little bit more white because I wanted that gray to be a little bit lighter than it actually was. I wanted to see a difference between the dark gray and the light gray. So I added a little bit of white just to give it a little bit more color contrast. And now I'm going to put um, sand and uh, a little bit small rocks in the other cups. So this sand that I'm using is actually um, sand for a play box. I just got it at Home Depot, so it's nothing special. I just got a bag of it so that I could mix sand in with my resin. And I typically have the resin in the cup first and then um, mix the sand in with it. And the reason for that is I don't want a bunch of dry sand at the bottom of the cup. So these little rocks that I've gotten are really quite small and I just got them at Dollarama. They're, um, I liked that they were a gray tone and it was gonna match the project that I wanted to put them Pardon? in perfectly. Downstairs. So after mixing oh. a little bit in there, I believe like I added a little like bit more stair. to the cup because I wanted there to be a little bit more of the rocks. Once I have all my components mixed together, I'm just moving them to the side to bring the tray in. And the first thing I'm going to put in the tray is the rocks and resin mixture. And I'm gonna put it where I want it to be, the shore of my little beach tray. And putting it all along. I'm not necessarily making sure that it's an even um, straight line. I want it to look a little bit natural like the beach. And there's a little bit of working time with the resin so I don't actually have to worry about getting it completely perfect to start. I can shift and move things around as I go if they're needed. So next I put in the sand and resin mixture. And then you might have noticed I use chopsticks to mix the stuff together. Um, typically when we've gotten Chinese food, we actually don't use the chopsticks very often or use all the ones that I've gotten. So I really like them for mixing this stuff together because they're nice and long and I don't typically get resin all over my hands by doing this. It's also a great way to move stuff around without having to touch it with the gloves. Next I'm using the darkest of my grays in there and then I'm going to use the lighter color tone of the grays and I'm gonna go a little bit back and forth between the two because I want them to mix together a little bit. I don't want there to be a line between the darker gray and the lighter gray. Um, it just looks a little bit more natural if they're a bit mixed together. And they do mix together a little bit as they are settling and as they're curing, but I do like to go in and help it along the way a little bit. The other thing I like to do is scrape out my cups as much as possible so that I'm not wasting um, resin. If I were to waste it a lot, it end up, would end up getting quite expensive, so might as well use it if we have it. So I'm just making sure that the base of my tray is pretty much all covered. And again, I'm going to take my little stir stick and I'm going to mix the two of the grays together. I want um, them to kind of flow together a little bit naturally. Because we're doing an ocean pour or resin on top of it, it's going to mix together when I'm using the heat gun as well, but I wanted to help it along a little bit just to start. And then I had a piece of sand that wasn't quite filled. So 
So I like my Sequin heat gun. First thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use it on a really, really low setting. And what I'm doing here is I'm popping all of the bubbles that get mixed into the resin when they're being mixed. And it's really quite satisfying to put the heat gun on top of it and watch the bubbles um, pop. I don't know what it is about it, but there's just something satisfying about it. I really quite enjoy this part. So I'm doing it before I put my clear and my white down because I want to make sure that there's no bubbles to start. And as soon as I put my clear and my white down to do the waves, I kind of need a higher setting on the heat gun in order to blow it to make the waves. I also put a new, a different tip onto the end of the heat gun just to be able to direct that air a little bit more. Be careful when you're doing it because it takes a very little time of using this heat gun to heat that metal tip. So you might have seen that I kind of flattened my hand as I was pushing it along. Uh, I just wanted to make sure not to burn my hand or melt the gloves that I was wearing. So first I put a clear layer between the beach and the gray resin, and then I put my white layer. And now I'm using my heat gun in a higher setting and kind of almost horizontal to it. It's impossible to get completely horizontal, but as close as possible to blow those the light from the waves across the gray. And then I found a few spots needed a little bit of extra white, so I'm just adding a little bit more to it just to get it on the thinner spots of the white. And you'll see right on the right side of the tray, I got some white on the edge of it. I'm gonna go back afterwards and just wipe that off. It's very easy to do while it's still wet and quite liquid. If you find you have any that doesn't really want to come off while it's still wet, you can use some isopropyl alcohol and like a Q-tip or something to help clean it off a little bit more. But I didn't find after using my fingers like that, I found that it came off pretty much, you can't really tell. So I just left it as that. So after I've got those waves there, I'm going to, um, take some sand dollars and some starfish and shells and whatnot and decorate it. Now, the sand dollars, I'll tell you right now, when I got them, the very first time I used them, the resin seeped right into them and they turned clear. So all my sand dollars I've pre-painted with a white paint so that when the resin mixes in with it, they stay white. And you can decorate the each part of this as much or as little as you want. So there's really no right or wrong. Um, I typically only do a few bits of the bigger elements like the sand dollars or the starfish. And then I use a little bit more of the seashells. The sand dollars and the starfish I bought off of Amazon. And the seashells, I've actually found them at our local Dollarama. Um, I typically collect little things like that. So they're fairly easy to find. Um, well, at our house, or where we live at certain times of the year, they're quite easy to find. So you're going to keep adding the shells as, uh, add as much or as little as you want. Um, I like to add a few. I don't like to add far too many because I kind of feel like less is more. And, um, to add too many, I just think it makes it look even more unnatural. So this resin has probably about a half an hour-ish working time, and then you can still work with it, but it does start to um, get harder and get a little bit tackier. If you notice little flecks of dust or little hairs from the air, um, you can pick them out in the first little while, but it does get to a point where you need to just stop and not pick them out. So I'm going to let this cure overnight before I add my second wave, but you'll see there's cells in there that you didn't see when they, the waves were first blown. They just kind of develop as it sits, which is really cool to watch. So this is the next day now, and I've already mixed my resin together because you've already seen me do it, so you didn't need to watch it a second time. So I, again, I have two different colored grays. I have my clear resin and I have my white. I didn't need any more gravel or any more sand because this is just a second wave right over um, the, part, the water part of the first, I'm not doing any more sand and gravel. So you're gonna put your colors down and you're gonna mix the two of them together, similar to how I did the first one. 
but I just want to help the mixing along a little bit to start and you'll see that I mix less uh, resin this time as well I'm not doing the entire tray I'm only doing about half of it so I didn't need as much resin as I needed the day before and by mixing and moving it along with the stir stick right now I'm just helping it cover the areas you want to have um, some decent coverage before you start blowing the waves. So I use a section of clear resin before I put the white in. Um, I'm not sure why it works better that way, but it actually just does. There's been times where in pieces I've forgotten to put that white layer and the white, sorry, the clear layer and the white tends to just sink and it doesn't really move as well along the top of whatever other layer I'm blowing it on. So I've found that it does help to have just that clear layer breaking between your colored water layer and the white part of the foamy waves. So after doing the clear, you'll see I grabbed my grays again. There's a few pieces that were not filled in, so I just filled them in a little bit. And now I'm going with my white section. I'm going to pour it right on the outside of the clear that I've recently poured. You want a decent section of white. It doesn't need to be super thick, but if you don't have enough, you'll notice that it doesn't really cover um, the waves as much and it also doesn't blow out as much either. So this time I just use the low setting to get the bubbles out because I'm doing such a small section I didn't have to really do it much before doing the white part. And then I'm using the narrower nib on the end of the heat gun and with a higher setting I'm just getting the waves out. Near the horizontal with the piece at that point. Um, and you want to make sure you're blowing it out. If you blow down on it, the, the um, cells don't really develop and it doesn't really blow out as much. So there was a section of white there that wasn't quite um, as covered as I wanted it to be, so I just went and added a little bit more white. So you'll see it, the white is fairly forgiving. You don't have to, it's not a one and done. You can go back and add a little bit more and touch it up a little bit which is always nice to know. It's always more stressful if you have to do it in one shot than if you can um, do it in little bits and pieces there. And then you are going to let it sit so you can see that I've gotten some cells already just in a few minutes, but as it sits, they will form a little bit more. And again, in the first half an hour or so, you can pick pieces out, otherwise it's done. So this is the finished tray sitting in my bathroom and it matches the countertop. Lovely. Have a great day.